Hello everybody and welcome back. This is an unbiased review comparing the Tacticam 5.0 to the Shotcam. Both of these cameras have areas where they excel in optimum circumstances to be used in. Let's take a look at some of the differences between these cameras, but stay tuned until the end to see how the video that comes out of these cameras compares. Let's take a look at some of the features now. First off, let's take a look at the resolutions. The shot cam will record in 1080p at 100 frames per second or 720p at 180 frames per second. The Tacticam will record 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 120 frames per second or 720p 240 frames per second. These are the maximum frame rates for these desired resolutions. The battery life of the shot cam lasts five to six hours when shooting clays or four to five hours while hunting. This is, equates to about 75 videos. The Tacticam on the other hand lasts two and a half hours. This is more of just a start stop recording which I'll get into later. The shot cam has an auto sleep mode. This means that if you do not take a shot or do not activate the camera in a certain time frame, it will go into sleep mode to save battery life. The Tacticam does not have that. The shot cam also has an auto record shooting feature that when it detects a shot, it will automatically record that video, whereas the Tacticam is just a start stop feature. Um, you automatically start recording a video when you want to start recording and you stop the video when you want to stop. There's no auto recording. The shot cam will take two hours to fully charge. In my experience, it's actually been a little bit less than two hours. On the other hand, the Tacticam takes, the manual says three hours, but I've actually saw this take a little bit longer than three hours to uh, actually fully charge the Tacticam. The Tacticam does have a battery indicator on it. Let me just power this on real quick and you can actually see this in action. These four green dots up here at the top of the Tacticam represent that the camera is fully charged. The shot cam does not have an area that you can actually see the charge rate, but if you charge it up before you head out into the field, you're usually pretty good to last a whole entire day shooting on the shot cam. The shot cam does have an area where you can actually align the reticle, your point of aim, and the app to where you're actually shooting. The Tacticam just has a red dot that when you turn the red dot on, that's just where it's set. There's no option to actually move it and align it to the beat of your gun. Um, the feel of these are quite different. The Tacticam actually has kind of like a rubberized plastic coating. Um, the shot cam is made of military grade aluminum, so this is, has more of a, a metal type feel. And I think that the Tacticam, the camera itself, might actually weigh a little bit less than the shot cam, but really they feel quite equal. I think that comes down to the actual mount of the Tacticam is very bulky, whereas the shot cam is nice and compact. So this makes the cameras very similar in weight when they are fully assembled and mounted to the gun. The Tacticam, you are able to switch between different modes, different zooms, and you're in your different resolutions. You have three different modes that you can switch between on this. Uh, you're not unable to do this with the shot cam, but when you're in the field and you're actually hunting, I don't really see a reason why you would want to switch between these modes. You don't want to be messing with that in the field. You just want to hit the button, start recording a video, and know that it's set to the right mode. There is an interesting option actually on the shot cam. Let me go ahead and activate it. You can actually turn a laser on, and this is kind of nice to be able to turn on to your shot cam and uh, actually be able to mount your gun. All right, maybe you can go ahead and see this. I'm gonna not shine it in the camera lens, but you can see there's a laser right here. So when you mount this to your gun, you can go ahead and practice mounting, shouldering your gun, and then following the edge of the room to actually see uh, that your point of aim is correct and practice with mounting. The Tacticam does not have an option for this. Another nice thing that the shot cam actually comes with is a bag full of spare parts. You get an extra lens cap, an extra uh, battery cover, that goes over the ports on the end of the gun that makes it waterproof. You get an extra rubber pad that mounts between the shot cam and your gun itself. And you also get a spare Allen wrench and two of these extra screws that mount the shot cam. Um, the Tacticam doesn't come with any spare parts. Now looking at what these cameras actually come in. This shot cam comes with a, a very nice case. You have your manual up here on top and the shot cam will fit right here. You have your Allen wrench, your charging cables, your power adapter, and a microfiber cloth. This is a nice case just to put everything in here, take this to the field, and the shot cam fits in here, fully assembled with the actual mount. The Tacticam, on the other hand, this is what it comes with. It comes with the cardboard box that it's shipped in. Uh, this is what it looks like inside. We have a couple pieces of paper, manual, the two Allen wrenches that you need, and you can't actually put the uh, Tacticam in here fully assembled with this mount. So it's not really a case to be able to store the Tacticam in when you're actually out in the field. It's made of cardboard, so it will fall apart pretty readily. You have your power adapter and charging cable in here. 
but that is all that comes with the Tacticam. Now let's go ahead and look at the ease of use. I went ahead and mounted the shot cam to the barrel of my uh, Franke Affinity Elite, and you can see there's one button down here. You simply push that button, and it's ready to record. As soon as I take a shot right now, the shot cam will be ready to record. All the actions are actually made from this button on the bottom of the camera. It's very easy to push, get a hold of. Also, the modes are very intuitive. There's really only two modes that I use, either turning the camera on and, and it's in record mode, or turning it in Wi-Fi mode to review my shots. And all you have to do is hold the button down for 10 seconds and it switches into Wi-Fi mode. You can go and connect to your uh, phone. But that is all there is to uh, getting up and using the shot cam. Very easy, very easy to access all the buttons and remember the uh, different modes to get into. Now let's go ahead and look at the tact cam. Okay, the tact cam has been mounted to my Franke Affinity Elite and actually going through the process was a little bit different. Um, they actually give you two Ellen wrenches like I said before. One is to actually mount the tact cam into the mount itself and the other the bigger one is to actually tighten the screw so it mounts to your barrel. Um, I like that shot cam only has one Ellen wrench. You don't have to remember which one you have to use. Now going ahead and actually using the Tacticam itself on this barrel, you can see if you had this gun actually shouldered and you wanted to turn the camera on, the button is actually up here on the top between the barrel and the actual camera itself. So you have to be able to get your finger in here, push that power on button, and there the camera will turn on. And then even to switch modes, you have to reach in here. A little bit more finicky than just pushing the end of the shot cam. So for just rating these out of uh, ease of use, I would give the shot cam five out of five stars. Seems very easy to use, very intuitive. Uh, the tactic cam, I'd give probably about a three out of five stars. Of course, these are my opinions. Some people might have different ratings for these, but these are just my own personal opinions. Now let's go ahead and talk about the apps, and I'll actually switch over to a screen recording on my phone so you can see how these apps work as well. All right, so when you first open up the tactic cam app, you can see the tactic cam 5.0 camera up top. Select that and it will automatically switch over to connecting to the tact cam. Um, first off, we have button down here in the bottom right. That just shows you your videos on here. You can go ahead, select them, delete them, and also watch them on here. This middle record button will start a manual recording and then you can go ahead and stop it right from the app. And then over here on the left hand side, you can switch between video, photo, or time lapse mode. Up here in the top right, you can switch between your various modes and you can change these modes right here by clicking the FHD 120 button. And here are the various frame rates that you can switch between. You can see this is the one that I was using um, to film the skeet throwing videos coming up next. Full HD 1920 by 1080, 120 frames per second. And I also did some uh, 4K 30 on the next mode button as well. So now the, uh, to switch the settings on this, it wasn't very intuitive. It's actually this pencil icon up here in the top right. Usually you use that to like compose a message. Um, this actually is where you go in and you can change the various settings in this app. So there you can change your red dot to on or off, but there's no option to actually change the position of that red dot. So that is the various settings. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the shot cam app and I'll show you the differences there. All right, so now we've switched over to the shot cam app. You can see everything is laid out pretty nicely. You have four icons down at the bottom. The first one on the right hand side actually allows you to go in and actually see your video files here. You can go and delete these, download these to your phone or view them in playback mode. Now going back to the normal camera mode, you can see the second button from the right will just start a, a manual recording and you can go ahead and stop the recording and it will be saved. And the third one over is how you align the reticle. So it kind of gives you the directions there, but you just use the arrow keys to adjust it left, right, up or down. And you can go ahead and save that. And last but not least, settings are very easy to get to. Last button all the way over on the left, you can go into what type of target you're shooting, uh, what kind of video format you want, um, what kind of reticle you actually want, your sensitivities in here, playback speeds, naming, everything is just right there, very easy to get to. And when you go back to the home screen, you can see in the top right corner what kind of mode you're in. So we're in uh, shotgun, semi-auto, and clay pigeon mode. And you can also see the date stamp on here. Uh, also note like how much more vivid the colors are as well as the picture quality, the resolution is. Um, just viewing in the app. So I think it's pretty easy to see uh, which one of these apps is the easiest to use. I give the shot cam 
app a five out of five stars and the tactic cam maybe like three out of five four out of five stars it's not super bad but it definitely is not as intuitive as the shot cam app and definitely not as easy to use now that we've went over all these features and how they break down on paper let's take these cameras to the range and see how they perform first let's start with the tactic cam and shoot a 30 to 40 yard target there are different modes for frame rate and video quality, but I'm going to choose 1080p at 120 frames per second as this is the recommended frame rate and quality for clays. You can see the Tacticam uses a red dot to indicate where the shot is placed. This red dot is unable to be moved and aligned with the sights. Now let's take a look at the shot cam. When using the shot cam, you do not need to turn it on and off to capture the shot. Simply turn it on at the beginning of the day and if a shot is not detected, it will go into battery saving sleep mode. When ready to take a shot, simply bump the stock of the gun or close the action and the camera will automatically wake and prepare to record the shot. When going back and reviewing the video, you can see the field of view of the shot cam is 18 degrees, which brings the shot closer than the tactic cam. This design replicates how a shooter perceives a moving target. Let's go to the app, or in my case, I'm going to use a computer to analyze the shots from both of these cameras. First, let's take a look at a hit with the tactic cam. The field of view on the Tacticam makes the target seem far away. Now let's watch the playback frame by frame. You can see the clay in the red box on the screen and the red dot in front of and under the target. When advancing the playback you can see a sudden jolt when the shot takes place. The frame after the shot you can barely see the pattern I have placed in the red box. The clay is also not visible. Now letting the shot play through you can see the clay break. Now let's take a look at a hit with the shot cam. The field of view being 18 degrees on the shot cam makes the target appear closer. Now let's watch the playback frame by frame. You can easily see the clay right behind the reticle. The frame after the shot is taken you can see the pattern in relation to the clay. Notice how the reticle has been aligned directly in the center of the pattern. Now letting the shot play through you can watch the pattern get closer and closer to the clay until it breaks. Now let's take a look at a miss with the tact cam. You can see the red dot is in front of and under the clay before the shot is taken, however the red dot cannot be adjusted to the shot of the gun so you cannot use it to know where you missed the target. You also cannot see the pattern and target after the shot is taken to know where you missed. Now let's take a look at a miss with the shot cam. You can see the reticle is in front of and under the clay the frame before the shot is taken. Since this reticle is aligned to the shot of the gun, it is accurate to see why I missed the target. Now letting the shot play through, you can see the pattern slowly getting closer to the target until you see it misses under and in front of the clay. Last, let's take a quick look at the tactic cam in 4K resolution compared to the shot cam in 1080p. Comparing the cameras at these resolutions, you can still see the shot cam has a clearer image. Let's watch that again. It is important to note all of these shots were taken at the same 30 to 40 yard range. Here are my final thoughts about the tact cam versus the shot cam and if you're liking these videos so far make sure you hit that thumbs up button also if you want to hear more updates make sure you let me know in the comments down below when i originally got these cameras i thought that the tact cam would actually have a little bit better picture than it does especially in a 4k resolution however the uh, shot cam actually looks like it has a better picture even in 1080p resolution than the tact cam in 4k i think this all comes down to the 18 degree field of view on the shot cam. You get a more zoomed in view that you're able to pick out that uh, actual shot and pattern of your shotgun and able to see your target that much more clearly and crisper. Another thing that I noticed when I was actually in the field testing these cameras is that when I turned on the tact cam, this LED on the power button and the mode buttons as well as the battery indicators, are not that bright in full sunlight. It was very hard to see if the camera was actually on. So breaking these down into the main differences between these two cameras of why I would purchase a tact cam over a shot cam, if you really want this battery indicator lights and able to see in the field how much battery life you have on your camera yet. Also, if all you want is a start stop recording camera that you just hit the record button and it records, for however long you want it till until you hit the stop recording button, the Tacticam will do that, as well as the price. The Tacticam comes in at $350 for the mount and everything to get it mounted to your gun. The Shotcam is uh, $650. However, 
they run $50 off all the time. So really it's usually around $600. And I think the shot cam is worth every penny of that. So why buy the shot cam over the tact cam? There are many reasons here, but I think the biggest one is the picture that comes out of the shot cam. You get that clear, crisper picture. Uh, the target is closer to the camera and you're able to actually see your pattern out of a shotgun. Even you're, if you're using this on a rifle, your target is gonna be that much closer to the camera and easier to see on the shot cam. Also tied for the most important feature is the auto recording. This allows you to capture a shot without manually having to turn on and power on a camera. All you need to do is when you have this mounted to your gun, hit the stock of the gun or close the action on your gun and this camera is already woken up and ready to capture your shot. Now with the Tacticam, you have to manually turn on this power button before you take your shot. And why is this important? Especially when you're waterfowl hunting, these birds are coming in the decoy so fast, you do not have time to take action and turn on this power button and then line up to take your shot. It's much easier just to bump the stock of your gun raise your barrel and take your shot and know that the shot cam has captured that shot. This also makes it easier when editing video as well as going back and previewing in the app when you actually just have that couple seconds of video of your actual shot being taken, it's a lot easier to view. However, you can decide how many seconds or minutes you want the shot cam to record before the shot is taken as well as how many minutes or seconds you want recorded after the shot is taken. And this might be more essential for like deer hunters you might wanna record a little bit more video before you take that shot. The battery life also on the shot cam is a lot longer than the tech cam and that comes on with this auto uh, sleep mode feature that saves the battery life on this camera and you're able to record an entire day's hunt on this camera without charging it. The reticle on the shot cam is actually aligned to the bead of your gun as well. So when you're going back and analyzing your video, you actually know that that reticle in your video is actually true and accurate and you're able to see why you missed a target right from that without even having to analyze the video and actually look for that pattern of your gun in the video. Also the shot cam comes with a laser on it and you know who doesn't love a laser? It also comes with the spare parts and a case and really when you break this down into what camera is easier to use I think the shot cam wins here as well as which app is easier to use. The shot cam as well is an all-around easier camera to use I believe. So which camera am I going to use to film all my hunts this year? You probably guessed it but it is going to be the shot cam. This is the best camera on the market. You don't need to take my word from it. I posted all the details prior to. You can actually look at the videos for yourself and determine which camera would you rather prefer. This Tacticam or the shot cam and analyze which camera is best for you in the hunt that you're trying to capture. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video I'm going to be posting. It was kind of a blackbird hunt that I went out and tried getting some starlings and blackbirds that were eating a farmer's crops and I got some really great video on the shot cam while I was recording with the GoPro as well and actually look at some of these shots and analyze them of where I miss birds and where I actually hit birds. Some really great shots on this hunt. Again, let me know if you have any comments or suggestions down below in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below.